Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Kotlin series. In this video, I'll be teaching you guys how to create your very first project and also how to create your very first Kotlin program. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to create your very first Kotlin program. So that should be very exciting if you've never programmed before. Um, so right now I have IntelliJ IDEA open. I showed you how to install this last episode. So this is gonna be the editor that we use to write our programs, right? So usually when you open it up for the first time, you're gonna see a screen similar to this one here. This is just gonna list all of your projects and you probably are gonna have nothing here. So what you can do is just click new project and this will take you through the process of creating a new project. So now you should see something similar to this. So this will be simply all the different types of projects that you can create. IntelliJ supports a lot of different types of projects, but what you want to select is new project at the very top, and then make sure that you select Kotlin instead of Java or any of the other options. So this is also a very popular Java IDE as well, but we want Kotlin, right? So the first thing that we want to do is give our project a name. You can call it whatever you want, but since this is our very first project, we can call it Hello World. And I'll explain why that's called that in a second, okay? Um, but now we also want to choose the location of our project. So this will be the simply the folder where all of our project files are going to be stored in, okay? So I'm simply going to click this little folder here and then find a place on my computer where I want that to live. So it looks like I already have this Kotlin folder here. So what I can do is just click it and then click OK. And now my project will live inside of the Hello World folder within the Kotlin folder. So it's going to be called Hello World because that's our project name, right? So this option right here, you don't really need to have this one selected. If it's your first time programming, you're probably not going to know what Git is. So you can unselect it if you want to. So we already selected the language. That's all good to go. And then moving down here, we can keep the build system on IntelliJ. We don't need any, any of that fancy stuff here. And the JDK is just simply the version of Java that you're going to be using. Because even though we're not coding our program in Java, it still uses the Java virtual machine. So you still need the Java development kit. So chances are you're probably not going to have it already. So what you can do is actually just download it within IntelliJ. So click download JDK. And then it should have the latest version of Java for you to download. And at the time of recording, the latest version of Java is Java 21. So I'm going to go ahead and click download. Awesome, there we go. Okay, so now we have Java 21 installed on our computer and also selected on our new project window, perfect. And so the last option that I want you to focus on is the add sample code option. This is a really nice option for adding, you know, some example code for you to get started really quickly. So just have this selected and it'll generate the basic stuff that you need for creating a new Kotlin project, okay? But that's all we need. We don't need any advanced settings or anything like that. We're all good to go. So go ahead and click create and now we're gonna create our very first Kotlin project. Give that a second, open this up all the way, and here we go. Now we have our very first project. So let's just start by explaining what we have so far. So we can see that we have this main.kt file open, and this is simply gonna be the actual Kotlin program that we are writing. So this is the editor window, the main window. And I'll explain this code in a second, but this is the sample code that you you know, told it you want to generate for you, okay? So then on the left here, we have the actual file structure. So this will be all the files within our project. So we have the top level project file, which is hello world. That's what we told it to be named. And then we have this dot idea file. And this is simply a, this is not really part of Kotlin itself. This is just part of your IDE. This is a settings folder that stores all of the settings for your IDE. So you never really need to touch that ever. Okay, so don't worry about that one. And then we have the source folder here. So this is gonna be the folder that stores all of your Kotlin code usually. So within this folder, you're gonna have a bunch of other folders usually called packages. And this is how you organize your project into different subfolders and stuff like that. But for now, the only thing we have within this folder is just the main.kt file. Like I said before, this file has the code for your Kotlin program that you're gonna be making. So this brings us to an important point. Whenever you want to create a Kotlin program, it has to be a file that ends with .kt. That specifies it as a Kotlin program. So in this case, the sample code that was provided to us created us a file called main.kt. So that's the name of our program at the moment, just main. And then down here, you have more files that you can pretty much ignore. This is just for Git stuff like I mentioned before. Don't need to worry about that. And this is another settings file here, so don't worry about that one as well, okay? All right, so that's enough of the boring stuff. Let's jump into actually coding our first Kotlin program. So as you can see here, it's actually provided to us by default. And this is, you know, nice to have sample code like this just because you can get started really quickly and easily. But since this is our very first Kotlin program, I want you to go ahead and delete this and we're gonna write it from scratch so that you can actually write your very first Kotlin program yourself, okay? So what we're gonna be doing is making a Kotlin program that writes the message hello world into our output console. And this is a tradition whenever you learn a new programming language. Every single person who learns a new programming language is gonna make their very first program be 
a program that prints out the message hello world. It's tradition, if you don't follow it, you will fail. That's just how it goes, okay? But let's go ahead and get started. So I want you to follow along as I write it. You should write it as well. Um, if you need to pause, go ahead and pause, of course. But this was not gonna make a lot of sense. I'll explain it after, okay? So I'm gonna write fun for function, and then main, and then we're gonna put a opening and closing parentheses. It should automatically put the closing one for you. And then you can put space, and then you can put a curly bracket. Then it should put the closing one, and then press enter and that will open that up for you. So this is what you call a block of code for your main function. I'll explain more of that in a second. But first, let's actually print out a message. So we're gonna write print ln for line, and then you can press tab to autocomplete that. And then within these opening and closing parentheses, you can put quotes, and then inside of the quotes, you can put a message. So the message that we're gonna write is hello world. Very, very simple, right? So now how can we actually run our program to print out this message here? All you have to do is click the run symbol here. You can do it here or you can do it up here. Either one is fine. So I'm gonna do right here, run main KT and watch what happens. It's gonna build it, it's gonna run it and it should automatically open the console for you. There we go. So it opened up the console down here. I'll zoom in for you guys and it says, hello world. So there we go. We've created our very first Kotlin program and it printed out a message, hello world. Hopefully that feels good to have made your very first program. But now let's actually explain what's happening here. So what is this fun and then main you know, thing here? What I said before is that it's a function. So what is a function? We're gonna learn a lot more about functions in the future, but really a function is just uh, a piece of code, a group of code with a name, okay? So that's all I'm gonna say for now. Just know that it's a group of code with a name. But the thing that you should remember at this point is that every single program that you create has to have a main function. So it has to have this here, fun main, and then the code goes inside of that. And the reason you need to have this main function within every program that you write is so that it knows where to start running because a program can be one file and inside of that file can have a bunch of different functions and then it could be a, a bunch of files with many different functions within those files. It can be a lot of stuff, right? So there needs to be an entry point into your program to actually start running it and do all its magic, okay? So always remember to create a main function and that sample code option will obviously generate it for you, but I think it's important to have the muscle memory of writing it yourself, okay? But there we go. That's how we can create our very first program. What we can do is actually, you know, print out some other messages if we want to. So we can do print line, auto tap, Press tab to autocomplete, and we can say, my name is Cody. I love cheese. And you can rerun the program by clicking the play button here. And boom, there we go. It says, hello world. And then under that, it says, my name is Cody. I love cheese. So this thing here is another function. Just like we have the main function that we've defined here that has our code inside of it, we also have these functions here that we're calling to do an action. So in this case, the action is just printing out a message into our console. Usually the functions will be self-explanatory, but if you see a function that you don't know what it does, you can actually click it to put your thing over it and then do control Q. And this will open up the documentation panel. So this will say exactly what the function does usually. It says prints the given message and the line separator to the standard output stream. So all this really means is it takes a message that you provide it and then prints it out to the standard output stream, which happens to just be our console in this case. So pretty simple, right? So that's a cool trick, control Q if you wanna do that. So usually the reason you wanna print stuff out in a program, just so you know, is usually you wanna know what's going on because in your programs, you're gonna have many different variables, a lot of things are gonna be happening and you're sometimes not really sure exactly what's happening. Uh, until you print out messages saying, hey, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I have this value. It's just very useful for knowing what's going on in your programs. And especially in the beginning here, when we're writing very, very basic programs, uh, it's gonna be very helpful to print out stuff so that we can see what values our program has, okay? So anyway, this is pretty much it for the first episode. You have written your very first program in Kotlin. I hope you're proud of yourself because it's pretty awesome to be able to write your very first program. But one thing I will say is that if this is really weird to you and it's really confusing, don't worry. It's gonna make more sense as we go along. As we write more and more programs, it's gonna slowly start to you know, be memorized in your brain and it's gonna make a lot more sense. You just have to piece everything together in the very beginning. So. At the very beginning, it's very confusing. It always is for beginners, but if you keep going and you keep writing new programs and keep practicing and keep playing around with your code, it will make sense. So just keep watching these videos and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just wanna review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video. Although your reviews are greatly appreciated. 
So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And uh, another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers, so you can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can, get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, Spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.